Hello there, welcome back to Planet Zoo. Thank you very much for joining me today. Do hope you're well. Here we are back in our newest zoo, Luna Zoo. Uh, so this is our zoo concentrating very much on structures and buildings uh, and gardens as well, uh, but um, kind of using those gardens as structures in their own right. So in the last episode, this is part two, uh, so in, in part one we were starting work on our huge reptile house here. And it, it did turn into quite an epic project, but it turned out really, really nicely. I can promise you that there's going to be a lot in this, uh, in this episode. And so I will do my best to keep things moving along at a swift pace because I do not want you getting bored. Uh, but hopefully there'll be enough going on to keep you entertained. So in the first episode, uh, we finished off all the exhibits around here and we put in our tortoises uh, in this segment over here. We also just got the shape of the, uh, the pathways in here, got another exhibit here and here as well. Uh, we also put in our crocodiles down underground here. So this is almost finished down here now. Uh, in fact, basically it is finished down here. It's the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the upstairs area here that still needs a lot of work doing to it. Um, we've got uh, a habitat to go in here. We've got a habitat here and a habitat here. I've got another doorway to do here. I've got the big main doorway to do here and I have the roof to do. Uh, so there's a lot going on. Uh, so this is likely to be quite a long episode, but I, like I say, I will keep it moving along as swiftly as I can. So without any more delay, uh, let me move it on a bit and uh, and see what I got up to next. Okay, so this is uh, this was my solution for this area here. I couldn't do much else with it, to be honest, other than um, just fill it in with rock work. And obviously it will then have foliage put around it as well. But I think it works. Um, just you know, build up the edge with these nice straight ones and then decorate it with the, the more interesting rocks and some of the small pieces as well. Uh, obviously I've just started building up around the uh, the two exhibits. Uh, oh, look at that. Oh, I thought that was an animal there, a bright red animal. I don't even know what's in this exhibit. Let's have a look. Uh, it's got to be something. Oh, is that a frog? No, it's a rock. <laughs> I know there's a frog in one of these somewhere. No, I have no idea what animal I've put in here. Maybe nothing. Maybe it's empty. Should you find out? Oh, it's a cockroach. So there's a couple of cockroaches in there somewhere. Probably staring right at me. Oh yeah, there's one, look. Hiding down under there. Here we are. Hello, Mr. Cockroach. Not the most interesting creatures, but hey-ho. Anyway, sorry. Uh, you know me, I get distracted easily. Uh, so yes, yeah, so this is the rock work. It's pretty simple, but it's it does what it needs to do. It fills it in. Uh, once it's got lots of foliage put on it as well, it will look really nice and it leads down nicely into this tunnel here that leads down to the crocodiles. So it did exactly what it needed to do and the theme will continue. So this area over here will, will continue having uh, the rock work done certainly all around this exhibit here and then the same here as well because you've got these two gaps. So again, this will all get filled in with the roof and everything with the, with the rocks. And the foliage, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty simple, but it's it's coming together. It brings all the areas together so using these archways to kind of link it all as well. Uh, I think that's pretty effective. Uh, so right there we go. That is our next little stage. Let me let me move on. Here we are with foliage added. So lots of ferns, big tree ferns, and some of these uh, smaller ones as well. A little bit of bracken here and there. Kept the theming really simple around here. And of course you are heading down towards crocodiles so i couldn't resist sticking in a little crocodile statue there and then there's another one over here trying to bite your head off as you walk past uh, oh look at that i've got a float oh no it's not a floating tree fern i thought it was floating look as you zoom away the graphics change and it looks like it's floating that's a bit strange never seen that before never mind can't do much about that um right and then around the corner so i think that looks pretty good actually i think it uh, especially once the roof's on and, and the atmosphere is there with all the lighting as well that uh, that will look really nice having all the uh, the tree ferns here uh, around this corner here I have decorated again 
with rocks and ferns all around this exhibit, giving it a nice flat roof, filled in these gaps here with all sorts of different styles of rock, uh, different shapes, filling it in, fill it up with ferns. Uh, put a few vines in as well, I like this. This works really nicely, having the vines hanging across. Done the same on this side here as well. Uh, just really creates a nice atmosphere. If you can imagine that you were down here walking around, imagine there's a roof obviously. Um, I think it would be quite a nice place to wander around in. Put the uh, education boxes in here and around this side here as well, telling you what's inside the tank. Oh look, we can see another cockroach. Hello Mr. Cockroach. Or Mrs. Cockroach. Never know, who knows. Um, and then uh, up the steps here, around the back. Uh, again, just finishing off with a couple of couple more ferns there. Um, so that's that area kind of uh, kind of capped off now. Really simple, just continuing the same theme from everywhere else. But it uh, it's working really nicely. I think uh, uh, yeah, I'm very very happy with how that uh, how that looks. Especially once, like I say, once the roof's on, it gives the whole area um, a whole different feel. Uh, which is pretty cool. So I can't actually remember what I got up to next, but I suspect this habitat over here went in pretty soon after I did that. Uh, so let me load up my next save game and uh, and see what I got up to next. We go with our next habitat. So this was quite a tricky one to do, I seem to recall actually, because of the shape of it, very narrow. I managed to get the barrier gate uh, to come in at the end here. Uh, and use this same um, fencing that I used over on the tortoise here. Uh, and as you can see, the animal, which we decided to put in here, they are the, the Nile monitors. Lovely little lizards. I think they're lizards, technically. I might be wrong. Might be amphibians. Not sure. No. Yeah. Hang on. It will tell me somewhere, won't it? Uh, where does it tell me this stuff? I suppose if I look at the... Superior. I don't like to get stuff wrong. I like to know what I'm uh, what I'm talking about. Um, are they lizards? Doesn't really say. I don't think. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, does it say anywhere on here? No, 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 no. Okay. Hands up, I don't know. Don't think it says oh, any type. No. no, 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 no. Okay, never mind. They are what they are. They're Nile monitors anyway. So, yeah, it was a bit tricky getting the um, traversable area uh, sorted, I seem to recall. Yeah, you can see there it's. Um, I had to keep on getting rid of the water and smoothing out the edges so that they could actually come and go through the the, the whole length here. So this does change a bit because I had to keep on, uh, like I said, just trying to smooth it all out so they could walk around properly. Um, but it wasn't too bad. I just made little little changes as I went along. Again, using this same rock here just to cover up uh, the side of the stairway there. Uh, it was a pretty straightforward habitat in the end really once I'd got the the land sorted out I just needed to get some foliage in I don't think I actually built them any sort of shelter because obviously this whole um, this whole enclosure this whole building is going to be um, roofed so the, the individual animals don't really need a shelter as such because it's not like they they need to get out of the rain or anything and obviously Nile monitors um, don't need to get out of the rain anyway because they spend most of their time in the water um, so yeah, it, it, it does turn out to be quite a straightforward habitat, um, but kind of cool. I kind of like how it fits into this thin area here. It kind of suits them because they are long and thin. I thought that was, I know it's a bit of a tenuous link, but it kind of made, made sense to me that they, they didn't need a big square area. They could just go long and thin and I could have a, a little river for them to swim up and down, um, sort of forced upon me because of the shape of the habitat but uh, yeah I think it works out pretty nicely uh, right let's uh, let's skip ahead and uh, and see what uh, see what I did next so like I said pretty straightforward this habitat I, I basically just finished it all off in one go here 
so first off I put some rocks in so I had a problem with the staff traversable area so I had to put this layer of rocks along the front here uh, so that they could get at least to this bit so I could get some enrichment items on here I think there's two I think there's a, a feeding one down under this bush as well um, they didn't need to get to the rest so that wasn't too much of an issue the stream changed shape a bit as well like I said uh, but that all sorted itself out in the end and then the stream I did what I usually do I sink these grassy moss panels down at the bottom and it really looks good doesn't it, it just looks like you've got all sorts of stuff growing all the way along the bottom of the water there which I really really like uh, it's a, bit, a few enrichment items around the place you've got a scent stick there and a, and a what is this one I always forget what this is a rubbing pad of course it is uh, you've got a beach ball back there I think there's yeah there's a pumpkin there so again the staff can come up this side as well and then you've got a scent one there as well and a ball here so plenty of things to keep them busy a few shrubs um, managed to fit a couple of little trees in actually as well um, this lovely copper one here what is that a river bush willow really nice and this little one here the uh, polylepsis tree as well uh, and then just a few shrubs, a couple more ferns, all the way along the back. Um, this is one of the changes. I recolored the rocks along the edge. So all of these uh, on the fence and these ones on the side as well. Uh, and then actually I just changed the base ones here too. Because um, I, I just felt like I, I wanted this, uh, this style of rock along the back. And it didn't look right having the sandy colored rock at the front and then this stuff at the back. So it's all, it all needed to be gray. Uh, so this is exactly what I did here where you just attach the rocks to the walls to create a backdrop um, but it just the, the the desert look didn't work for the for this animal and the the sort of terrain that I was creating inside uh, so I went with the the gray along there and then I thought this just didn't quite work along the back I needed something along the back here uh, it was all a bit too plain so I went with uh, these lovely backdrops here this sort of jungly look just to again just to add to the the jungle feeling uh, of the habitat really and that's it I mean it really is a very simple little enclosure but hey the, the animals are happy they got plenty of space they got a, a, a good bit of water to swim around in a good bit of land to run around on if they want there's some good viewing areas for the public there's a stand here and see them getting about they can come up on the bridge here and look down and obviously you've got all of this space all the way along here where they can watch them as well um, and yes sure in a real uh, you know in a real environment you wouldn't be able to just lean into Nile monitors like this and you know anyone could just climb over and, and get to the animals I know this is a game it's not hyper realistic this zoo um, it's just meant to look good and it does I'm very really happy with how this habitat turned out so uh, I think I probably I do I think I add one or two more little things to it uh, probably some a couple of education boards I seem to recall uh, that seems to be the obvious thing that's missing at the moment uh, but on the whole I think that was basically uh, everything that I did uh, and then I believe my next move was to come on to the next enclosure over here uh, so I'll have to move the game on and see what I did next. Uh, but for now, that is basically our Nile monitors added to our reptile house. Um, so that's one more animal in. So what is that? Two two large enclosures. No, three, sorry. Three large enclosures with the, uh, the crocodiles underground and all of our exhibits over there as well. So we're doing well. We are looking pretty good. So let me move it on and uh, let's, uh, let's see what I got up to after this. Yeah, like I said, just the one little addition here. I did just add in one uh, education board here for the Nile monitors. Just one of the in-game ones, nothing fancy. Um, actually, yes, I have made more changes, haven't I? I shortened the stream. That's right, I remember now. Yeah, this it, it, it was still... It, it, having the, uh, the rocks along the back here, it wasn't working. It didn't look great. And uh, the, the, the walkable area I found... The staff still weren't really getting to the right areas uh, and in fact they weren't feeding them properly they they were getting hungry for some reason they were 
always dumping the food at the end here and for some reason the Nar monitors just weren't coming down here to get it so I got rid of this line of rocks I shortened the stream a bit and I just made this into a nice bit of land so now the uh, the staff can walk right up here nice and easily um, and make sure that the uh, the animals get plenty of food and it's fine they've still got plenty of water here to, to swim up and down in that's all they need um, so yeah everyone was happy with that um, I also changed the tree I've just noticed as well so we've got two of this lovely red tree now I got rid of the other one um, can't remember entirely why I did that I think maybe I just wanted to continue the theme of the uh, the, the, the red color uh, probably on there that's the problem when I record these commentaries so long after actually doing the building work. Um, sometimes I forget what I've done or why I've done it. So I do apologise for that, but that's uh, I mean, that's just how I have to do these things sometimes, unfortunately. Um, so this was our next project over here. And as you can see, we have the wolf caiman. Lovely little crocodiles here. Or alligators, crocodile. I think they're part of the crocodile family. I could be wrong. They might be their own family of caiman. I'm really not sure. I apologise if I'm factually incorrect. Uh, oh, look at that. He's just put his head straight in the land. What a silly little caiman. <laughs> so I remember this being a bit of a nightmare, actually, this one. Um, building it wasn't so bad. So I managed to get the barrier to work in here. I managed to get water in here. So that was all fine. The problem that I remember having this with, with, with this habitat a little bit later on is similar to the problem I had with the Nile monitors where for some reason the the guards weren't feeding them. So the traversable area, uh, not the guards, what am I talking about? The zookeepers. The traversable area for them was all of this. They could walk right the way up here. Yet for some reason what they were doing was walking into here, doing this. You see they walked to there and they think, you know, do a little inspection thing and they don't need feeding. Well, I was then clicking on these guys and they were hungry and they were just never putting any food down. They see, they just keep doing this. They walk to here, they cheer and they walk out. They, no one was ever putting any food in. Uh, now, I can't actually remember how I solved it. I, I did solve it in the end. Um, and hopefully I will remember how as we uh, work our way through this project uh, but it was a real pain um, and you can see the water's gone a bit funky in this corner here as well which is a bit odd uh, I, I think I'll probably cover that up with a rock um, but yeah anyway so this is our dwarf caiman habitat again it, it's a good size actually for dwarf caiman but it just you know just filling the gap kind of thing um, I was originally going to bring it around into this area here um, but it all just got a little bit fiddly and in the end I thought no it just it, it wouldn't need to go into there I can I can fill all of this in with uh, with continued rock work similar to what I've done on this side here so that's the size that I went for I gave them a little ramp to get in and out of the water here uh, and then I do build them a small shelter as well um, but yeah it's a bit, again it's, it's going to be a pretty straightforward habitat um, but really nice I really like that I managed to get this lovely water here so that people can just just stand here and watch them because they do spend probably 95 percent of their time in the water um, so you want to be able to just stand and, and watch them swimming around they don't really come up onto the land back here which is good because obviously from down here you wouldn't really get to see them if they were up there but it's good that the animals have somewhere to go if they do want to be um, you know on their own and away from being watched uh, but most of the time they do just hang around in the water which is cool if that's what they want to do then uh, I'm more than happy to oblige them in that so that is our uh, caiman shape so uh, let me move it on and uh, uh, yeah see what uh, what decorating I did so I've started obviously with the water because it is the main feature point of the habitat and I'm really pleased with how this turned out actually I think it looks really nice so first off just decorated with some rocks covered up this dodgy end bit here where the water wasn't filling in properly rocks all the way along the floor here to cover up the edge of the path covered up the divide in the glass as well with a rock as you do and um, and then I've just tried to make it look as natural as I can along the back here so just sunk some rocks into the ground lots of flat rocks because obviously they can't really do a lot of climbing so I wanted it to look like they could use the rocks to get in and out of the water and they can I think if I go to a traversable area you'll see 
they uh, it, it looks like they can't do a lot of swimming here, but actually they can because obviously they can um, they can kind of go a bit under the water as well. Um, but yeah, so they can get in and out at various points, which is good. I think I do change this a little bit actually later on, um, but on the whole, it, it's uh, I've. I've gone for the look more than the practicality and I do think that looks really nice. I love the decorating in the water, I do this all the time. So again I've sunk these panels into the floor just to give the floor a nice green look. A few of these ferns I put underground even though they're not, they're not uh, sorry, underwater, they're not underwater plants but they look great underwater so I put them in there. Some of this grass as well, The um, I always forget what this one is. Uh, the underwater eel grass, yeah, that's fantastic stuff. So a little bit of that in there, and then these fallen trees. This is one of my favourite little tricks in water. Put a falling log in there. I mean, look how nice and natural that looks. Um, really, really nice. And then I've gone for one of the, the the big stumps at the back here as well. And then just a couple of rocks as well. Just you know, just to add a little bit of flavour, a little bit of texture. Just a few of these little rock piles sunk in too just adds that little element of detail that you don't really notice but when you when it's pointed out you think oh yeah yeah if that you know if that wasn't there it wouldn't look as good um so yeah really really pleased with how it turned out i think if you look at it from down here it looks incredibly natural uh, and obviously the the animals themselves look really good swimming around in it so yeah very happy with how all of that came together actually um Obviously up on the land, again just continue with the ferns, some of the bracken here. Um, just trying to keep it low, I didn't, don't want anything too tall, obviously the roof is going to be at roughly the level that this wall is at. So you've not got a lot of height to play with. I do put tree ferns in here because I wanted to continue the theme from the rest of the the whole building with the tree ferns. Um, I. I can't remember if I do the same trick on the wall at the back. I think I probably do with the rocks again because this is a very large expanse of very white space um, which doesn't look good and as a backdrop it doesn't really work for these animals either. Uh, and obviously because of the, uh, the, the landscaping here you can see it doesn't really go through here so I, I had to fill in this gap so I think I probably uh, use some rocks around the outside here to get this gap looking better uh, but we'll see that because I think that's probably what I do next so let me uh, let me load it up and uh, and yeah let's see what uh, what I got up to next and here we are we are pretty much done I think with this habitat again it was pretty straightforward once I got into the flow so I did do uh, what I said roughly along the back I put in um, a layer of rocks. I didn't want to go too high because it would just look a bit silly if the rocks came right up the wall. So I kept it to a single layer all the way around the, the back here. Also like I said put the flat ones down to cover up the gaps in the terrain work and then filled it in in the front with this sort of uh, a row of um, tree ferns around here and again down here. Got a cu couple up on here as well. I like this one sticking at the uh, the angle here and a few of them are leaning over just to try and add that little bit of extra um, sort of texture and, and detail if you just you know when you're planting these things just lean the odd one over just makes it look a little bit a uh, little bit more natural uh, and then up here I put a shelter in the corner here now they don't actually use it I'll be honest <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen them go in there um, but that, that's fine if they don't want to use it that's okay they can I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm sure I got it right so they can yeah see they, so they can go under there if they want um, but I'm guessing these animals just don't want bedding um, they don't care they just sleep in the water as far as I know um, I mean it could be actually that I put the wrong bedding down maybe they need uh, need the grass stuff instead maybe I should try swapping it over um, yeah I'm not sure um, but it doesn't matter, it looks fine. Um, I've got some more ferns obviously dotted around. Look, is he going to go in there? While I watch, is he actually going to go and use the bed? Look at him. Look at him. He's, he's proving me wrong. I'm liking this. This is the first time I've seen one of them go under there. Look at that. He's a happy little caiman. Go on, curl up and have a snooze. Oh, you've just made my day. There we go. So they do use my little shelter. It is worth it after, oh look, he's, he's zonked out, 
He's off to dreamland. No, oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> oh, that's great. That's uh, yeah, that's cheered me up. That has because uh, it's nothing worse in this game than building something for the animals and the animals not using it. Um, but they do, so that's great. So where was I? Sorry. So there's various enrichment items you can see. You've got the scent marker there. You've got a pumpkin. You've got some food. You've got a, a food post there and a, a rubber ball there. So plenty of things to keep them entertained. Uh, more rocks, of course, uh, down all the way around the edge here. And just a few dotted around um, elsewhere as well. Not too many, though, because they, they, um, they were blocking the traversable area. And uh, I didn't want to do that too much. Um, so yeah pretty simple and then I created this little education board at the front and I wanted to put a little fence in here just so I made a little rope fence here just to stop people getting too close to the glass you wouldn't want people putting their hands on the glass or knocking on it or anything so just a simple rope barrier there not finished the end here because I didn't know at the time what I was doing around the stairs here so that just ends and then eventually that will be finished off but yeah, there we go. That is our Dwarf Cayman habitat. It's really simple. Oh, and the lights, sorry. Let me uh, let me explain the theory with the light. So uh, what I did, I, I wanted something on this wall and I thought lights made sense because obviously eventually this is all going to be under roof. So you're going to need some indoor lighting. So I did lights along here. And at the moment, I think they're just plain. Oops, let me actually click on one. Uh, what color are they? Ah yes, you see, so these are orange and then what I do eventually is I go back to these other habitats and I put lights in along these walls here and make each one a different colour and it absolutely works so well. It, uh, I put some along here as well in, in these exhibit areas. Um, so each, it's almost like a zone, so you go from a different coloured zone into the next coloured zone and each colour represents a different animal. So that was my theory and it works really well actually, so I'll show you that at the end once uh, the roof is on and I can put it to night time and come in and you'll see what I mean. But it does look really, really nice. Um, so yeah, so that is our Dwarf Cayman Habitat. It, it, it was simple, it was pretty quick to do, but it came together really nicely. I'm very happy with it. I think it looks realistic. I think it looks really natural, especially the water area here. I'm really, really pleased with how that turned out. And even just this little rope fence as well, I think looks very um, authentic. I think that's, it's, you know, it's realistic. It's exactly the sort of thing that you would see. So yeah, really, really pleased with how this, this whole zone was coming along at this point. Um, not sure what I do next. Uh, we'll find out when I load up my next save game. But you can see how well it's all coming together now. I mean, a habitat like that, it probably took me about an hour to build this. So an hour's work and you've got quite a large area filled there uh, with a really nice little habitat. And this was this was probably only half an hour, this Nile Monitor one. I think the Tortoises one was a bit longer because there was a lot, lot more rock work involved. Um, so obviously we've got the large habitat in the middle, which is our final big creature. Uh, can you guess what it is? You'll find out soon. Uh, and then this corner here, which is all to do with rock work. So that's continuing the rock work from this side over to this side and obviously around this exhibit here as well. Uh, and then we still got the, the main entrance gateway to do. Oh, obviously I have done this gate at the end here as well. So again, it's just a simple archway with, uh, with the, the colored rocks kind of blending together at the bottom here. Uh, I haven't decorated this keep outside because that's just temporary there just for the keepers to use at the moment. Uh, right, so there we go. Let me move it on a step and see what I got up to after the Cayman habitat. My first attempt at this rock work, um, and it's, it is pretty much how it ends up being, but um, you'll notice straight away I made it too tall. Um, so there's a whole load of these rocks here that stick up too high. So I do have to lower them a bit. But my thinking was uh, to create sort of um, a step feature here on this side uh, and then on this side as well uh, to create lots of flat areas so I can get some foliage in. Um, I was planning on having some benches on here as this, obviously this is why I created this pathway this particular shape so I could have some benches here. I just thought it'd be nice to have a little archway here just to continue that theme of the uh, the archways from over here. 
uh, to have it here and then you know I could maybe put a statue in here or something I, I can't actually remember what I put in here in the end but we'll find out uh, I just wanted it to be a little bit different there so yeah really simple just just really blocking all of this in uh, with this rock work and obviously the foliage will be themed basically the same as over this side with all the different types of fern and of course we boxed in our exhibit here and put in the um, information boards this is uh, scorpions in this habitat here I bet you I will not find them because they're tiny and uh, oh is that one on the tree there no no you see they uh, they hide they really hide is that one no 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 no, no. I have no idea can never find any of these things doesn't matter they're in there somewhere uh, yeah so there we go so that's uh, that is my plan and then obviously just to get some foliage in there as well so let me move it along again so I've decorated I've continued my fern theme um, you know keep it keeping it uh, dense but loose at the same time you don't want too much in here you don't want it to look overly crowded I've got some vines hanging too like I said, I had to lower some of these rocks, particularly the archway. So actually the archway is less of an archway now, it just creates this small hole. So there was no statue or anything I could find that looked good in there. So just, again, just sort of, you know, some foliage, some ferns, um, and then just continued again, the ferns along here and up here. Had to sink some of these tree ferns in a bit. So you've got a, a tree fern here, which is just sunk completely in, but it still looks pretty cool, I think, just as a, as a large fern. Um, and then the same along here, another little vine here, a little tree fern, and some of the smaller ferns, and a couple of benches and a bin as well, uh, and another one on that side. So really simple, but it, it just blends the whole area together. Uh, the steps down here, I forgot to point this out a second ago, so I just edged with these, uh, these sideways rocks here, and then the rope just got moved in, so it just angled in slightly like I did at this end here and capped off with another post so that finished that off nicely um, and that was that area done and this exhibit done so yeah that uh, that finished off all of this it sort of links the whole thing together now if you zoom out so you can see obviously you've got all the lovely sandy colored rock over this side and then these habitats use the more uh, gray style of, of stonework and uh, yeah coming together really nicely so we've just got this one large area left in the middle here now can you guess what's going to go in here hmm what do you think what haven't i put into the reptile house yet what was the big obvious creature which belongs in a reptile house that would need a habitat this big considering that i've already put in crocodiles so it's not gonna be them what do you think have a guess Yep, you're right, it's them. We'll find out in just a second. Here we are. Did you guess right? Oh yes, it's the Komodo dragons. The centerpiece of our reptile house. Absolutely wonderful creatures. Uh, I've seen these before in a few zoos here in the UK. They don't do a lot, I'll be honest, but they are spectacular when, uh, when they're just sitting still, just staring at you. Um, they're, they're just massive creatures. They really are very impressive. Um, and so yeah I had to have them in the zoo somewhere uh, so there we go that's what they are doing in here and so I had done a bit of terraforming obviously I've given them a bit of water and I've just landscaped it a bit just put some bumps in put a little hill at the end here just to make it interesting rock work wise I decided to go with moss I wanted a different color because it is its own habitat in the middle here so I didn't want to use the grey and I didn't want to use the sandstone. So I went, I went with moss. Uh, I, I love this, the, the look of these mossy rocks. So I made um, a wall all the way around the outside here. And uh, the, the brick surrounding here is uh, temporary, or it was. I can't actually remember, I'll be honest, what I go with in the end. But that was just there for the, for the time being, just to, um, just to fill it in and so I could figure out what I was doing. Um, but I obviously I needed a fence as well, so I used these pieces, uh, plenty of fence. So they're just generic uh, fence pieces that I sunk into the top of the rock and just created a nice simple uh, um, 
barrier all the way around the top here which I think looks good I had to use a couple of these little posts here and here because they when they connect together they don't quite work they don't fill in the gaps um, I'll show you what I mean so if I move that out of the way you see it just they don't connect very well on this sort of angle um, they don't look good at all they overlap and yeah you, you can't get it to look right so you just had to put a post in there to make it uh, all blend together and then obviously on these corners I've used a rock there and then there's a rock there and again at this end there's a rock so you don't have any of those issues and uh, yeah there we go so that is our, our going to be our Komodo habitat in the middle there and I'm pretty pleased actually with how this one turns out as well um, so let me move it on again and uh, and see what else I did to this habitat the brick walls have changed to wood and I've decided to keep them quite low and to put these windows in I like the idea because obviously the animals are very low so if the animals are just the other side of this um, this wall and obviously the idea is you don't walk on the rock work that I've done along the bottom then you wouldn't be able to see them so you've got these windows in thinking that the animals will come and lie in front of the windows along here I don't think they do but that's the idea of it so there we go I think that looks pretty cool and obviously I didn't want a, a, a tall barrier because I want you to be able to see into uh, the habitat from this angle obviously from up here you can get a good view of everywhere um, but when you're down on this side if this barrier was any taller you wouldn't really be able to see too much would you that was my thinking uh, the water here again I, sh I know I do it every time but it just looks great I just sink these panels into the ground here uh, and just really simple decorating of the water there and then I decided to build them a shelter because they needed one um, or you know, obviously they don't need need one but it kind of kind of made sense that they would have somewhere similar to what I did over here for the the Cayman just you know somewhere shallow that they can go inside so that's what I've done here so again just really simple layer of rocks top and bottom couple of po posts here to, to support the weight and some bedding in there and they go in there and they lie down on the bedding which is uh, plain and simple but very effective uh, so there we go that is that so it's coming together nicely uh, lots of foliage to do next and obviously get the um, enrichment items down too um, but yeah you can you can see it coming together at least kind of makes uh, makes a nice centerpiece I feel to uh, to the whole building it's looking really nice actually isn't it I love this I really do love how this building turned out um, like I say epic project but uh, worth it in the end definitely worth it in the end oh yes look I've put all the uh, the windows all the way around here I don't think I'd done that earlier uh, I think I'd done the ones on that end but I have actually put them all the way around the building now Oh yes, and I've also at this stage put these lights in along here as well. So you've got lights along there and then you've got them along the back here on the tortoises. And have I put them into here yet? I don't think so. No, I haven't put them in here yet, but I do eventually put some lights into these bays here as well. Um, but yeah, let's move on with our Komodo dragons, shall we? Uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's load up the next uh, save game and see what I did next. I've done a fair bit as you can see so I've gone uh, I've gone with the foliage lots of foliage um, sunk a lot of this underwater plant in actually even though it's an underwater plant it looks pretty cool as uh, an overground plant as well uh, I managed to get some trees in here which I was pretty pleased about so this is one of the uh, the coastal mangrove trees here and then there's another one of those I think this is one yeah up in the back corner as well and a few shrubs um, and a few trees here kind of just sunk into the ground uh, again these coastal mangroves uh, I like the look of them I also liked these ones uh, what are these ones called the doom palms I really liked them so again I wanted a few of those in and height wise I can get away with it uh, in here sunk some of this stuff into the ground a bit custard apple trees around here uh, I wanted some some foliage around the edge of this um, this hill Obviously the centerpiece of the hill is this pumpkin up on the top to so encourage them up there. You've got a football, you've got a scent marker there. Uh, you've got a rubbing pad down here. And what else have you got? You've got a scent, I oh, know, is this a scent one or a, yeah, a scented sack there. You've got a food thing there. 
I also put them in a water tray up here. Don't know why, I just felt like they needed a nice clean source of water. So that is why I've put that in there. And then the rest is just decorated again with some ferns, uh, a few reeds in the water here. I uh, didn't want to leave the water bare of reeds, it just it felt right in this habitat. I didn't put any reeds in, uh, in either of these, I don't think. I um, don't know why, I think because these are smaller animals, I thought the reeds in this one would have um, maybe just sheltered the animals a bit too much, you couldn't see them and it didn't really make sense in the caiman here either to have reeds in here, it just didn't really work, it wasn't necessary and again the animals are just a bit small, you don't want to block the view, whereas these guys are much much bigger so you can get away with having some bigger plants and shrubs around, you can see when they walk through all the foliage, you can still see them pretty well. So it's not such a big problem. Uh, you can see they do use their shelter. This guy is in here at the moment having a, a little lie down. Or oh, it might be a girl. It's the girl. It's Rara. Great name. Who have we got over here? Who's the boy? Where are you? I know you're there somewhere. Who have we got? Pramana. Uh, Pramana and Rara are our Komodo dragons. Um, and we also put in an arch over here. Um, I just I love I just love the the theme of the archways, and I had this corner, and it just needed something, so I decided to sink an archway into this corner, and uh, I like it. It just you know it's it's continuing the theme of of little tunnels and arches and things that that I'm using all over the zoo. Obviously, I'm using them around the entranceways here. I'm using them in the middle of the walkways and I've been using them elsewhere in the zoo with these hedge archways as well. So it's kind of a, a continued theme is the idea. Put an information board here. I had a big blank bit of wall space here. So I just put in a simple Komodo dragon education board there as well. And that is our Komodo dragon exhibit done. So again, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but I really like the look of it. I think it came out very nice. And I think it makes a good centerpiece uh, to our reptile house. So looking from the sky now, I think you'll agree, or I hope you agree, it's turned out really, really nice. I'm so, so pleased with how this whole building came together. But it's not over yet. Oh no, there's still more to do. So I still haven't put the lights in over here. I think I only did that once I started putting the roof on because then I could see what it looked like at night. So we've got two big jobs left to do. The roof, which turned out to be a big, big job. And it also, it actually changes um, after the end of this video. I believe once I'd started the next habitat in the zoo, I went back and changed the roof. So I'll explain that at the time. Um, and I, I'll show you what I mean uh, in a minute when I start building the roof, what, what changes. And then obviously this, this doorway here, I needed to create some kind of a large, a large maybe, maybe an archway was my thinking, some sort of arched door here. Uh, this turned out really nice. I'm so happy with how this looks in the end, actually. You've probably seen it on the thumbnail, in fact, how it turns out. So yeah, a bit of a spoiler alert there with the thumbnail picture. Um, and then obviously just decorating out the front here as well. So still a bit more to go, I'm afraid. I uh, appreciate this is turning into a long video, but I am trying to buzz along with it as much uh, as I can. Uh, but I really just want to keep showing you bits of this because I just think it just turned out so nice. I'm so proud of my work in, in this building um, when I think of when I started and uh, I really wasn't sure how it was going to look. Um, actually, I haven't quite finished it. I need another bit of rock covering that. I assume I come back and sort that out in a minute. Um, anyway, so let me let me crack on and, uh, and see what I started next. I believe I do the roof next, uh, but we shall see in just a second my plan for the roof um, now the idea was I wanted it to be a big flat roof essentially but I liked the idea of having some kind of domes in it to let light through so my theory was I would build a dome get it in place duplicate it around so I had a few of them scattered along and then fill in the rest of the roof with art shapes to create a flat roof that was my theory and that is what I do but it doesn't end up like that in the end um, so first what I decided to do was build a dome well if you can call this a dome I don't know what you want to call this but this is what I built so it's all custom so beam pieces here uh, several different window pieces to create this uh, this window look here 
uh, and then again stone beams coming up here and these are planks put sideways and then lengthways at the top and then duplicated around to create this shape uh, and then one of these pieces at the top here to, to cap it off which I really liked the look of uh, it even looks good from the inside as well which I was pretty pleased with so that was that was what I created and the idea was I would just plonk that down a few times on there fill it in Bob's your uncle jobs done and that is what I do and so what I will do next is load up the next save game which I believe will show you the roof with these domes on and I will then explain to you what I like about it and what I don't like about it and why in the end it changes uh, so let me get that loaded up for you now uh, and I will describe in a bit more detail my thought process this is how it ended up looking and I don't know it I like the green roof I like the flat roof I did have to raise the wall up a bit more um, which is fine you'll see something that I do with the wall in a, in a minute to make the wall look better um, but this roof uh, the green is fine I like the big flat green roof uh, it looks okay from the inside as well it kind of fills in uh, down you know down to the level that I wanted it to um, and I even like it from the inside I like this you see I think that looks cool I probably could have done a better job with the windows on the inside here I, I ended up I had if you look on the outside of the windows you've got the central window and then you've got these two side windows and I forgot to actually duplicate them on the inside so you've got gaps so I completely messed that up but these windows I should also have done them with glass that was a mistake because obviously they're not actually see-through but I like the idea of having these domes here letting light inside uh, I think as you walk around inside here the I think it would look good in real life you know I think if you had these these areas here with daylight coming through however I also like the idea of not having that there because you're in a reptile house and I'll put inside lighting in and so I kind of wanted the lighting to purely come from inside so it really felt like you were in somewhere sort of dark and swampy maybe underground you know looking at these big lizards walking around underground that kind of thing so that was that was my two trains of thought plus simply from the outside the I just didn't like the look of the domes I just I don't think they were the I don't think they the right shape maybe I don't know maybe the shape is okay but maybe they're too small maybe I needed just sort of two massive domes on here or three maybe um, I don't know there was something about the look of this that just it wasn't working for me um, so I think I, I, I don't think I change it yet I think it stays as it is but I kind of knew in the back of my head at the time that it wasn't going to stay like that um, but I, I, I know that I had an idea for this doorway and I really wanted to get on with that so I believe that is what I move on to next uh, there is also a bit of work that I do with this outside wall just to try and um, make it a bit less uh, what's the word I'm looking for it's it's very blank at the moment isn't it so I do something to this outside wall which yeah, it took me a little while to do um, it wasn't too bad but yeah it took me a, a little bit of time to work out uh, so let me load up the next save again only one or two more maybe three um, and then we'll be done with this video I promise uh, but we are getting there we are we are very very close and then I will give you a little tour around inside with the uh, with all the lights on as well because uh, I do think it looks pretty cool uh, you see at this point I have now put these lights in this area here uh, so yes yeah, so all the lighting is in place but first let's just crack on with the outside here this, uh, this doorway was I really wanted it to look alive so the first thing that I wanted to do was get the edge done with the uh, the topiary hedging just to make it look like you've got one massive hedge that's been grown up there um, but of course once I put that in place it it was too square it, it, it looked a bit too unnatural so I decided I wanted to put some plants on it so that's what I've done I've just sunk these plants in sideways into here so it really looks like they're just growing naturally up inside the hedge and then I've done the same with this one on this side and it just um, just took the edge off of the edge if you see what I mean um, you know just kind of relaxed the uh, the sharpness of it a bit particularly this pink one I think that looks really really nice and natural growing up there uh, filled in the bottom here started putting this um, 
these moss sheets down here to fill this in and then that, that, that theme will continue on this side as well. I uh, really like this as a, as a gap filler um, when you've got a, a good size gap like this just putting this down just make sure when you do this just make sure you turn them so you don't end up with a repeated pattern uh, and then obviously you just layer up on top with more foliage and fern stuff like that which is what I do soon and it does look really really good in the end uh, but really wanted to focus on this archway um, so obviously that wasn't all I was going to do uh, what I wanted to do was have some I wanted to have some kind of an actual arch again to smooth off the squareness because this is very square I, I wanted these corners here to be uh, rounded in some way so I really wanted to get something there and I didn't want it to look too solid because um, I didn't want to really block the view of looking inside I wanted that to be an inviting entrance you know so um, glass was the obvious choice uh, and so that is what I go with so let me load up the next uh, stop point uh, and see what I did next. Here we are. So uh, let me show you what I've done with the entranceway. I managed to find some nice glass pieces. So you've got these lovely arch pieces, but of course they didn't fill the whole expanse. So I had to fill in the gaps with more pieces of window. And I think this looks really, really nice. Um, just just fits it in nicely, filled in the gap perfectly and created a lovely entrance here for people to walk through into the reptile house so there we go really really happy with how this turned out got some writing on here it's a bit cheesy I really wish they'd add more different types of um, fonts into the game because these just look a bit cartoony I wish there was a, a lot more and I know there's a lot of custom fonts out there it's not something that I'm uh, very good at myself and I don't really like to use other people's hard work in my own zoo so that's why I've just gone with this simple um, in-game stuff and then I wanted something at the top because again it looked a bit square so I've just put some of these hydrangea bushes up at the top here so I just created a little raised flower bed here and put some hydrangea bushes along the top which I thought looked good and then I've done what I said along here so um, around this side here I put some ivy growing nice and sort of randomly dotted all along here and then got some growing up here and then I've gone with these other ferns these are the uh, I, can't, I can't remember what these ones are called the Australian fan palm sorry not ferns palms I love these things they're absolutely fantastic so got them along here to just to really try and try and create that sort of jungle feel as you walk towards the reptile house here uh, got some of these massive um, lipstick are these the lipstick palms hang on bear with me yes lipstick palm trees uh, really really tall so they, they just suit this thing perfectly they just look fantastic again over this side here continued the the same theme with the uh, the, 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 the green uh, boards along the bottom you know the, the, the big panels along the bottom and then these palms as well and uh, and then by the door here I used um, I found people cutting this corner off here and walking through the glass because of course the door uh, you know the door overhangs the path so the path is actually right under here somewhere and so people are walking through here so one way to block people from walking somewhere is to put a bin down so I decided to put a bin on both sides and turn them into flower pots so I've got one of these lovely things what are these ones the ponytail palms as you can see I've had to sink it right into the ground here uh, and, and it, it shows a, a tiny bit underneath the bin but it's fine I think it looks really nice actually and then I'll just put a little nettle in the bottom of each one as well just so you it sort of covers up the the look of the the waste bin and uh, I like that I think that's quite a creative little thing to do and uh, I love these palms as a kind of a, you know sort of door frames um, I think they look really nice there and I also did just copy the um, the topiary hedging into the the a couple of the gaps here between the windows there and then on this side as well I've, I've done it here and here again I'm just trying to break this wall up trying to make sure that this wall doesn't look too repetitive um, there is something else that I do to this but I obviously I, I thought I did it now but I don't I think I do it when I do the next habitat so I'll have to come back and point that out at some point um, what I will also tell you is that basically with the roof of this building the domes don't survive so the domes are going to go and I, I, again I will show you that when it happens uh, but I can I can tell you I've, I've already done a load more building in this zoo so I can tell you a little bit in advance of, of 
actually doing it what I did and why and I just didn't like these these domes they didn't work so I took them out and I, I just continued with the the flat green roof for the entire thing so let's go inside and I will put it to night and you'll see what I mean about the lighting and hopefully you like it I certainly like how it turned out so let's let the lighting take grip there we go so as you come in you know you've got a few things highlighted obviously the the, the windows look good from these domes um, but they eventually do disappear so ignore that but I went with blue lighting around here and obviously all of these actual habitats have their own lighting inside as well so that looks good but I, I decided on blue inside these fake uh, habitats here and I think that it looks really nice just so this whole zone here looks very blue which I really enjoy I think that looks nice you come around the corner here into the tortoise zone and it's bright because these are desert creatures uh, and they are living in a desert environment so you have nice yellow lighting along here and you come up the stairs here and you come this way towards the Nile monitors and these are fairly jungly so they have these lovely green lights uh, highlighting their habitat and down here not a lot going on for the um, uh, the, 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 the Komodo dragons they don't have their own lighting as such but they, they get various different reflections from the other lights anyway so I, you know, I, I didn't feel the need to put any extra lights in here because I thought it looked pretty nice as it was actually just borrowing the light from other areas then you come over here to the Caymans and they have a nice orange light uh, but I also put in some lights under the water here again just some blue lights under here um, really highlighting the water I think that looks really really good at night I love having the the orange at the top and then this nice subdued blue down here and you can see the Cayman here just swimming in the water highlighted in the blue light really really happy with how that turned out Originally I didn't have the lights in the water and it was just too dark and you couldn't actually see the caiman swimming around So um, I had to put some lights in and I didn't want it to look the same as up here So obviously this is meant to look almost like a sunset I suppose and then down here It just made sense to have it as a, a light blue color and there's our little caiman having a swim around And then we come up here And there's uh, well, again there's, there's nothing here, but you've got the light coming from this dome and you've got the habitat here uh, you can look over again into the Komodo dragons but also if you come around this way once more stay on the ground we go down to our crocodiles so again going down into a cave so it's a lovely bright light so you don't you know you don't really feel like you're coming down underground into a cave as such but then under here I've gone with some simple cave backlighting so you've got some orange lights back here that's that are just highlighting enough of the water that you can see the animals swimming around in there uh, actually it is a bit dark here i think i do come back and add a light above here to highlight this corner because it, it wasn't really getting any light um, and then in this cave here i think this looks quite nice actually this cave i know you can't really see much of it from the public point of view but there's enough light in there i think that looks really nice nice and cave like with all this stalact uh, stalactites hanging down there so that's all provided with just one light back there uh, and then there's one up here somewhere is there no yes there's one here as well that highlights the rocks at the back here um so there we go there that, yeah that, i think that looks really nice i do i think I think I'm very happy with how all of this looks in fact um, let's just put it back to daytime so hopefully you like what I've done in here I, I appreciate it has been quite a mammoth project I probably could have split it up into three videos uh, but hopefully you've managed to stick around and enjoy this second video with me even though it has been quite a long one I didn't want to stretch it into three videos just for the sake of making an extra video I wanted to try and squeeze it all in to two so if you have stuck around to the end i really do appreciate it because i i know it can be hard to sit through uh, long videos listening to me prattle on but hopefully the result is worth it I, I'm, I am very happy with how this project turned out it probably did turn out bigger than i wanted um, but actually it's fine i'm working with it I'm, I'm in the process of doing habitats around the outside here to try and break it up a bit uh, so yes that's uh 
there's lo lots of things going on in this zoo let me tell you that uh, in the future so that is our reptile house and I'm going to leave it there I'm not going to waffle on anymore uh, because I'm sure you're bored of the sound of my voice by now so let me call it a day there so thank you very much for watching my video and indeed any of my videos not just this one I really do appreciate you spending a bit of your uh, spare time um, on my channel and uh, hopefully I inspire you to go away and build your own zoos or play other games you know just do whatever makes you happy that's what matters in life isn't it so let's call it a day there so i will see you in the in the next episode um i'm just trying to think what i do in the next episode i believe the next habitat is in this space just here and i'm not going to tell you what the animal is you're going to have to wait and see um, but it's a nice it's a cute little habitat that i build uh, and I will hopefully be releasing that video shortly after this one. So until then, hopefully you can join me again. Uh, do take care of yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.